Hi everybody, it's Laura with Mom Envy and I'm going to show you how to download the free digital notebook. So first I'm going to click on my post and I will scroll down to the bottom and I will find the picture that says click to download files. Okay, you will enter your password and once you do, it'll take you to this page. I have skipped over that because I don't wanna show everybody what the free member's password is. So you will click to download this, but I am actually going to right click and open mine in incognito because I am the owner of the Google Drive. It'll look different. So I'm gonna to try to make it look as much like it would look like for you. Okay, so when you open up the Google Drive, you'll see that you have four different files. You have your Brights file, in both your blank and your lined, and then you have your gray one in both your blank and your lined. For today's example, I'm going to be using the blank one. So when I click this, you have the option right up here in the upper right hand corner, you see the little down arrow with what looks to be like an inbox. If I click this, it will download the file. And down here it'll open up and it'll say gray notebook, blank PDF, and I'm gonna click download. And because I'm working on my iPad, I'm gonna click right here where it says open in, and I'm gonna click open in, and I'm going to say open in GoodNotes because that is the planner program that I'm using. I also have Notability, so I could do that, but for right now, I'm going to do open in GoodNotes. Then it's gonna ask me if I wanna import it as a new document, which I do, so I'll click open as new document. And now I have my planner or my notebook inside my app. So if I turn it this way in portrait, you can see what my cover looks like. But for today's example, I'm going to be using it in landscape mode because it's just easier. Okay, so you have the cover of your notebook. The next page is the page where you can do your owner page and you can write that who it belongs to. If this is not a page that you need to use, you can cover this up with whatever you'd like. On my left-hand side of my entire notebook, you are going to see that I have three symbols. The first symbol is the home symbol, and I'm going to take off, I'm on my pen right now, so up here in the upper right-hand corner, I'm gonna take off my pen. Okay, so if I click the home button, it will close my planner completely, or my notebook completely. If I click this, little button right here that looks like lines, that's my index. It'll take me to my index page. And if I click the T page, that will take me to my templates page. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my notebook again so that I can start like you would. So we have our notebook. Again, we have our belongs to page. And then we have our notes sections. This is our table of contents. As you can see, I have two pages of this, which is actually two different spreads. And I have a hundred different note sections in each of these notebooks. That means that you can link to a hundred different sections. If I were to click the number one, that will take me to section one of my notebook. I'm going to take you back to table of contents. If I click number 11, that'll take you to section 11 and so forth. The reason this is so great is because you can divide your notebook up in a hundred different sections which makes it extremely versatile because you can use it for so many different things. So now what you can do is you can actually label each section. I'm going to use my pen to do it as an example first. So I need to click my pen tool in the upper right hand corner. And let's pretend that I'm gonna create a section. I'm gonna zoom in to make it easier to write because that's just what I prefer to do. I'm gonna use black and I'm going to say Christmas because maybe right now I'm planning Christmas because of what time it is. So I'm gonna write Christmas 2022. If I go off my pen tool and I click section number one, it will take me to what will now be my Christmas section. So I need to go back to my pen tool and I'm just gonna write Christmas, super messy, just so we can see when we click back to it that it is our Christmas section. So I'm gonna click off my pen tool so I can navigate again. The other option you have is instead of handwriting, you can actually type. So I'm going to click my pen tool. And this time, instead of handwriting, I'm gonna click my type tool. And I'm gonna to click right next to number two. 
Now I already have my font picked and the size picked based on using this notebook regularly. So you're gonna probably have to adjust it and you can do that easily here. So let me first, let me just type in, now we're gonna say, I'm gonna bring up my keyboard and I'm going to, okay, now we're gonna just call this spring vacation, because maybe I'm doing that. And I'm gonna have to drag this blue line to make it wider. I'm gonna drag the blue line and I can make it the length of this or I can just make it as small as I need it. And right here over up top is where you can change your font. So you can change whatever font you have. I've loaded a couple extra fonts that I use regularly, but you can load any fonts that you would like or just use the ones that come standard. And then you can change the font size. You can also change the color. So let's say I want to make this pink because it's spring vacation. I can change my, or my color to pink. You can use, just like with any other program, you can change the font and color any way you'd like. So now I have two different sections set up. Again, if I was using this on a regular basis, I would probably con use consistently the same thing, handwriting or typing. But this is just for an example to show you that you can do either one. So remember how I wrote Christmas 2022 in the Christmas section? So look, if I click the number one, it'll take me back to my Christmas section. If I click my index, I can come back home and now we can go to spring vacation. And so now I have my spring vacation section. So I'm gonna go ahead and write spring vacation. Let's see, I'm gonna write, oops, spring vacation right here so we know that this is our spring vacation section when we click back and forth. I'll, I'll, listen, when you go to that section, you don't have to label it. I'm doing that just for the purpose of showing you how when I click those links, it takes us to that section. So I wanna show you this so you understand how this is set up. If I were to click Christmas 2022, it takes me to my Christmas page. It is section one. I have not inserted any new pages. So that means when I flip my page, just like in a regular notebook, it will take me to section two. Now, you can actually add pages in your sections. So I'm in GoodNotes, so I'm gonna show you how to do it in GoodNotes. Up here, you have this little plus sign. If I click the plus sign, I can say current template, and that will go ahead and paste an extra page here. That will not mess up your hyperlink. So if I were to go to my index and I click spring vacation, you'll see it still goes to spring vacation. Even though if I scroll back one, you'll see I now have a blank page that's been put in there. And so it makes it so that you can add as many pages as you'd like into your sec each of your sections, which makes it super versatile. I'm telling you, this thing is a game changer. So, all right, so now we have two different sections set up. And let me show you a little bit more about what you can do with the sections. Um, if you are, would like to use different style pages within a section, I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you click the T here to go to templates, you have nine different templates included that you can copy and paste in. So if we do it this way, so over here, if I click, okay, let's say I want a to-do list. I click my to-do list. I can click my three dots in GoodNotes. I can say copy page. Now I'm gonna go back to my index and now I wanna do spring vacation. And I'm going to go back up here to my plus sign and I'm going to click paste page. When I do that, it will now paste in my to-do list. So let's say that I wanna do, okay, so we're gonna say trip ideas. And these are maybe the places that we're considering going to. So we could say, oh, let's say Disney the beach, the mountains. Let's be really crazy where we're at Europe on here, even though we would never consider going to Europe. Uh, for us, we may, most likely we would do something locally, so we'd go to Hershey Park, or we would go to King's Dominion although I'm not sure it's open yet. Um, okay, so as you can see though, I can write now my to-do list. The only difference of doing it this way would be that, as you see when I click Spring Vacation, it is not gonna be my first page, it'll be my second page. If you would like to use the template on your first page here, instead, when you click Templates, down here you can click Access the Mom and the Google Drive folder. If I click this, 
and it's asked you, okay, it's an external link. I'll say, yes, I want to proceed. Okay, so because I'm inside of the actual app versus just the online browser, it's going to be a little bit different. So for me, when I click this, if I click this, it's going to actually save it to my camera roll. But you can choose instead to just copy it, or you can download this entire folder and then copy it from your actual So now that I have saved that, I'm going to go back here to my index and I'll click Spring Vacation. And now if I want to put it here, all I would do is I'm going to go off my pen tool and I'm going to see here where my camera is, where my picture is. I can actually import that. And what you can do is you can resize it any size that you would like. And now, when I go back to spring vacation, I will actually have that on my first page. So you can do this however you'd like. You can insert the templates either way. You can either copy the entire spread or you can just paste the PNGs and resize them. What's nice about this is that you can actually change the size of them. So even though this is the set size, you can actually, if you wanna have a, real, a much smaller to-do list and then do other things within here, you can do that. Um, you can also crop it. Let's say that I wanna have it take up the whole space, but I don't wanna have two of these. I can actually, if I click my picture one time, I can click crop and then I can drag this over and I can just have one row of to-dos. And so it's really gonna be a personal preference which way you'd like to do it. I like to, do it this way. I prefer to be able to manipulate this to be any size I want or adjust it any way I'd like. And you can't do that with the pages, but it may not be the way that works best for you. So that's just kind of an overview of how you would put those templates in. So let me go back to templates and show you again. So as you can see, you have nine different ones. You have a blank page, a line page, a wide lined page, a notebook, a dot grid, a graph, three columns, two columns, and to do's. When you go to the Google drive, you'll see that different color to do's will continue to be added as I make new notebooks. So what's fun about that is if you check back regularly, you might have some new different to do colors. Okay, so we've got our note sections. We have a hundred different sections. I've only filled in two. So let me show you one of my other favorite things before we stop, which is, oops, I'm click that and come bring that back down. Okay. So if I need to find something in here, so maybe I'm trying to remember, you know what, where is, let's see, the, the trip ideas. I remember that one of our trip ideas was Disney. So if I type in Disney, I can click search. And even though I use handwriting, it will search it and it will find it. I'm telling you, it's my favorite feature of all time. It makes it really easy, especially for my work planner, to find where I've put different things. So. That's a favorite feature. Another favorite feature is I love that I can easily move my text. So I'm going to click my pen tool. And if I click this, I'm going to say, I just want it to be my handwriting and text boxes. I do not want it to move images. Cause if I do, it might move like in that other one, it'll move your to-do list itself. So if I, let's say I want to, okay. So first off I can erase. So we know we're not going to go to Europe, right? Okay. So maybe though King's Dominion becomes a top idea. So I'm gonna circle Disney and I'm gonna move it down here. And then I can take King's Dominion and I can move it up here. So I can rearrange these as we talk. So I'm like, okay, Disney probably isn't gonna happen. You know, we just went to the beach last summer. I, let's do an amusement park. I can rearrange those super easy. My favorite thing I did this for, let me actually just show you because I have it open. So I use this for home and I've been using it so far this year. So as you can see, I've got my son's 10th birthday party, my oldest son's school year, my youngest son's school year. I should have put, if I see, this is where if I thought this through, I would have put his school year first. And I still could go in and do that and copy and paste everything. Um, but I've got Thanksgiving and I've got Christmas that I've been working on. So if I go over here to Thanksgiving of 2022, you can actually see my craziness that goes into planning for my Thanksgiving. So I have all of our meal plans and everything, all of our prep. <laughs> you can see my doodles my husband drew, drew on my notebook while I was working, all the different things we had to do to prep. 
all of my shopping and recipes and things like that. Okay, so this is where it's my favorite thing. As you can see, my timeline is pretty intense when I'm planning out Thanksgiving and how I figure out what I need to do. But this is how I was able to make my timeline really easy. And so I've got my breakfast timeline and then I have my full timeline for Thanksgiving. And what I did is I can actually, I made two different timelines because I couldn't decide if we were gonna make rolls or not. This was my timeline with rolls, this was my time without. And we decided to make them a day ahead. So anyways, long story short, sorry about that. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. As I'm making my timeline, let me show you. So for example, I have 335, but then something I missed and forgot that at 330, I needed to boil my potatoes. So if I click my lasso tool up here, I can take this entire thing and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag it down one to make it easier to work. But I can take this stuffing one, oops, and make sure I don't get the one underneath of it. And I can circle it and I can switch these. And now I can take this entire thing, move it right back up one. But it made making my timeline for Thanksgiving super easy and super fast because I was able to move everything whenever I would think of something else that I needed to do. So as you can see though, I really use this planner very extensively. I use it, I don't use this planner on a daily basis, but I do use my one for my job on a daily basis. And this one is way more intense and it has a lot more things in it. Let me see if I can show you. So for like, for example, for my Thanksgiving, let me show you. When I was working on Thanksgiving posts, even though this is a digital notebook, I was able to copy and paste in a whole calendar. And so that's what I really like about these is that you can copy and paste in images from anywhere. Let's say you're in class and your teacher has posted something up on the board. You can take a picture of it and then you can paste it directly into your notebook, which makes this one of the most versatile tools that you can use. Now, aside from notebooks, you can also, there's planners that you can use digitally, but the notebook just offers a very different type of note-taking system than using a paper notebook. So if you haven't tried it yet, I think that this is a really good first step into testing out digital planning because you can see just how beneficial it can be. So I think that's it. I think I've kind of showed you the basics. Um, and if you need to know how to use the basics of GoodNotes, what I suggest doing is watching some YouTube videos and maybe at some point I'll actually show you, show you some as well. Although there are people out there that know far more about it than I do. But every single digital planning app is gonna be a little bit different. And so this is what GoodNotes looks like. But if you are using a different planner app, watch a video on how to use it, how to import a document, how to do the basics of, of writing and typing and things like that. And it'll make your use of this notebook a lot more successful. If you have any questions, you can just send me an email and I'm happy to help you.